What is going on guys? We are back with another video talking about the Madden 23 ratings and today we're going to be looking at my list for the top 10 most overpowered rookies heading into the start of Madden 23. We do a video like this every single year and it's always a blast because you always get to see the crazy ratings that EA comes up with and just how freaky the athletes keep getting every year in the NFL world. Of course, we do a lot of franchise videos, specifically ratings this kind of, you know, week, if you will, this weekend, and I'd appreciate it a ton. If maybe you thought about subscribing, it's free, and you can always do it, and undo it anytime you want, and I hope you don't. Hopefully you forget about it and just festers, and you're just like, oh, it's 10 years from now, you're like, oh, why the hell am I subscribed to him? He's dead. I mean, what? <laughs> of course, our number 10 player is going to be a player that if you watched our earlier video, he was on that underrated sleeper video, whatever the hell I titled it, I don't even know. The sleeper video, he's just so good, even though he's a lower overall, he still makes the damn list. And then, of course, it's going to be Mr. Nick Cross, the safety, the 20-year-old safety, 69 overall, 94 speed, 96 excel, decent agility, 71 catching, and of course, his zone coverage is 71, I believe, 73, should have known that by now, and an 84 hit power. I don't want to, you know, hold up too much on this one, because once again, I mentioned him in the last video, and... It's pretty obvious, fast man, young, win, right? So definitely a, a guy that makes the list without a doubt. There was a lot of good, strong safeties that were fast and uh, or safeties in general. And there will be another safety on this list. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's just so many. You got JT Woods. It's just a lot of good safeties that came from this class. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I may have forgotten about Daxton Hill. You know, we're going to uh, treat Nick Cross as our uh, uh, honorable mention. I'm going to make Daxton Hill my number 10. It's so close, but Daxton Hill is six overalls higher. And the reason why I made it a close judgment call of just ignoring it, I think Daxton Hill will be guaranteed to be star or better, maybe even superstar. So Daxton Hill is going to get on the list mainly for that. Of course, ultra fast, just like Nick Cross. I believe he's also pretty damn young. Of course, his coverage ratings are going to be a little bit higher, as you would expect with a higher overall player, a guy that went higher in the draft as well. But you do see that drop off in hit power, which is 78. There's a bit of a difference there. Six overalls in hit power is, is pretty significant, especially when you're talking about 70s to 80s. You know, if it's like 60s to 70s, you don't really care too much, but... 70s, 80s is pretty big, but once again, I'm going to allow him to be the number 10 guy. And uh, sorry, Nick Cross, but you're going to be the honorable mention. And now we move on to a guy that would have been higher if not for his position. I uh, can't tell if that kind of spoils it or not, but you're about to find out right now. And that is going to be the running back, Kenneth Walker. Uh, of course, a lot of Seahawks fans were maybe a little surprised by this pick. I thought a lot of Seahawks fans wanted this to be Malik Willis. I remember seeing a really, really stupid, uh, I don't know who it was. I apologize to that analyst. Maybe I read it wrong or they they just weren't thinking. But I remember seeing something like the Seahawks shouldn't go QB. They should do what they did with Russell Wilson, get the draft the team around them, and then go QB. So you do realize they got a gem in Russell Wilson, right? They didn't build the roster first and then grab a guy in the first round. It was a later round guy. You know, this is this, they could literally have had maybe another Russell Wilson potential here if they would have taken Malik Willis. I don't understand what that person's talking about. I get it, right? Build the roster first, grab the quarterback later, but I'm certain the Seahawks would love to have Malik Willis right now. I'm certain of it. And they could have gotten him even in the third round. But Kenneth Walker, of course, you know, the running backs in Seattle, super injury prone. So much talent, but super injury prone. It's a team that loves to run the ball. Kenneth Walker and Madden here, we're getting a little bit rebuild talking here, is so good. The only reason why, like I said, he's at number nine is because running backs are a dime a dozen, specifically in franchise rookie running backs. I think there's probably three minimum running backs that are 90 plus speed, 80 trucking, 80 stiff arm, 80 juke move, 80 spin move, you know, they have literally the entire package. That's the reason why he's number nine on my list, despite the fact that he's 93 speed, 94 excel, 89 carrying, 82 trucking, change of directions, 90, 84 juke move, 77 spin move, 78 stiff. I don't remember looking at James Cook or any of the other running backs too much. I'm almost certain he's by far the number one. 
I, I'm, it's not even close. I'm pretty damn sure. Yeah, James Cook is very, very fast, but 64 trucking, which just does not compare. And of course, with Brees, fast, good trucking and everything, just not quite as fast as Kenneth. And if Kenneth's number nine, there's no way Brees could have made the list. And of course, with number eight on the list, the only other D... Nope, that's not true. The only other safety on the list just gets the nod quite a bit above Daxton. And that is Lewis Seen, another guy that could easily be superstar, probably going to be star though. 93 speed, 95 excel for a man who I believe is six foot two. 61 catching is a little sus, but it's workable. It's definitely usable. You can definitely catch a pass or two with that. Jumping's decent enough at 88 injuries. Stamina toughness is great. Change direction, we don't talk about around here. Zone coverage is decent. But the thing that also adds up to all how good he is is that 89 hit power. Lewis seen is absolutely insane. Number eight, because once again, we've been seeing faster and faster and better safeties. You know, he could have maybe had Tyson Anderson on the list even. And like I said, JT Woods is super fast. And we had Nick Cross that we just, you know, cross off, if you will, because Daxon Hill was forgotten about. A lot of good safeties and ones that already existed before this class as well. But still number eight because of how freakly he is. And then number seven, we jump right in because, of course, another guy that was on our last list with the most overpowered uh, sleepers, if you will. I don't know what the hell the title was once again, but six foot three linebacker weighing nearly 240 pounds with 92 speed, 95 excel, a decent catch at 67. And you compare that to scene, it's, you know, blazing, uh, you know, what is it called? Catching rating, <laughs> blazing catching, okay. Uh, but 85, co you know, COD, which is literally better than like the entire safety class. I'm pretty sure it puts him right next to Isaiah Simmons. Really insane. Coverage ratings are decently, uh, you know, decent enough. And then more importantly, he's got 84 hit power. He's got enough to work with there. And of course, that speed, dude. The speed and excel and change direction is just absurd. Once again, maybe would have been a little higher if he wasn't playing linebacker, which we have been seeing more athleticism as, you know, the years have rolled on here in real life. But still blazing nonetheless. 69 overall as well, so he counts as that sleeper like we said but also insanely overpowered. Then for number six, we officially have the last DB on the list. And with that being said, you probably can tell who this is going to be simply because of where he was selected and because of how damn high of an overall he is. And that is Sauce Garner, 78 overall for the six foot three, 92 speed, 94 excel, 74 catch cornerback. His coverage ratings are insane. He's got good jumping. I mean, where are the coverage ratings, to be fair? 76 uh, man, 74 zone, 73 play rec, 67 pursuits. This guy could very well be a superstar or X factor in the game, which would make him absolutely insane, which is why he makes the top list uh, for DBs on my you know top 10 most overpowered. And number six, being that he has that chance to be really, really high dev, Crazy overall, very fast for 6'3". He's really all you could ever ask for. He's a guy that would easily go top five in any of the rookie classes you're you know, playing in a Madden franchise. So he's just perfect. He's perfect. I'm, I'm D-riding here. Now we move on to the only lineman on my list. There was a couple of really good ones, and you could have maybe put them all on the list that you think are going to be superstar dev, which I think there's a chance it could be three or four. But my number one which was considered by a lot of people to be the number one, is Evan Neal, 77 overall, more than likely a superstar of elementary lineman who's already higher overall than Andrew Thomas, I believe, which is a little stupid because I'm pretty sure he came on strong last year you know, his own teammate, but 76 speed, 79 excel, 92 strength. Not sure why you would want to play a guy that's likely superstar that's a tackle outside of a tackle, but you could easily play him a guard if you really wanted to because of those you know, athleticism ratings. Don't 100% sure, you know, know what these base pass block and run block ratings are, but the nearly 80 is really good, obviously. Uh, as far as his actual ratings go, though, 91 impact in the 80s for pretty much all of the uh, blocking, if you were to balance them out. He's got an 83 lead block. He's just a monster. And once again, likely going to be superstar with abilities, which you literally can't teach. Now for number four, you may be a little shocked that he's this low. He is most likely the guy that I think was talked about the most, at least post-combine. And the reason why he's not higher, 
is because I don't know how it fully affects Madden. But that's going to be Mr. Jordan Davis, a guy that I would expect to be at least star, obviously, but most likely superstar. The reason why I have him so low, despite the fact that he's an absolute freak, is because I don't really think being big in Madden really helps. I think the animations matter the most of just getting a hand on someone. So I feel like it just it's about your ratings more than anything for a position like this. You know, if you're a taller linebacker, it's obviously helpful. If you're a taller cornerback, it's obviously helpful. I know corners did moss a bit even when they were a little shorter, but obviously helps more being taller. But as far as a DT goes, I don't know if being bigger really plays that much of a factor. I don't know if speed plays that much of a factor. Excel for pass rushers, you would assume plays a factor, but I don't think it plays as much of a factor as it does in real life. So that real life aspect doesn't really play as much to me, but because he's such a high overall, because he is a freak athlete, because he has that high strength, really good block shedding, and he's probably going to be a superstar. He's going to be my number four. But I think what I'm saying here is pretty fair based on Madden. You know, 75 block shedding, but only 68 power, which we know how hard it is to develop DTs. It could take a while to get him to become an actual valuable asset on your defensive line. But obviously, crazy good, overpowered as hell. But more importantly, I feel like the other guys I have on this list are maybe more influential with their overpoweredness and that will actually come in the form of another defensive lineman being Trayvon Walker they gave him a very very good overall maybe a little surprising to most people I know a lot of people on the base service would think you know number one overall pick and you know that's gonna happen but a lot of people also think the Jaguar is Jaguar it we'll see obviously when it all said and done but absolutely freakly a guy that is at least start of element trade could be superstar, would not surprise us, but 88 speed for a six foot, I believe five, nearly 275 defensive end is crazy. Speed, obviously, on the edge, especially if you're going to drop him back if you really wanted to every once in a while, matters a ton. So does Excel. 88 strength, uh, 58 catching, so he does have good enough catching if you were to get in front of a ball. I believe his jumping, yeah, 88 jumping is pretty good. But more importantly, this guy is a monster when it comes to stopping the run. 79 block shed with 74 power move, 82 pursuit. You could play him in coverage if you were, like I said, and you're playing a 3-4. You have to put him in back every once in a while. You could definitely do it. And also the fact that he has that chance to be a high dev is why he's just slightly better than Jordan Davis. Now, if you were going to say, you know, they're the speed and excel compared to their body size, I would say Jordan Davis beats him. Once again, I don't think a DT speed, excel, and more importantly, size matters that much in the game. I know it's stupid to say, but I think it's factual. I, I really, I, it really is. Then we have the final two. The number two guy is tough for me. Super big fan of him. Wanted him on my team. A guy that pre-draft, a lot of people thought maybe would go to the Packers. A guy that instead went to a division rival, and you could probably put two and two together to arrive at mini Tyreek Hill. Six foot one, mini being lower overall, of course. He's bigger, technically. Six foot one, young, 98 speed, 95 excel, 80 catching, for a 78 overall wide receiver, why did he have to go to division rival is only an answer the Vikings could uh, give because they absolutely sold. Uh, of course, looking at some of the other ratings, stamina and toughness is a little maybe questionable, but injuries decent, obviously. Uh, jumping, what was that? I think it's like a 82. Yeah, it's not great. Once again, you want him burning, and that's what he's going to do. I don't know how you stop a guy this fast on a drag. I really don't. I honestly don't. Catching's great. Route running's really good. Release is a little low because that's what wide receivers are like in Madden, but still 72 is probably better than at least 70% of the receivers. And with the height, with the speed, with the likely superstar, maybe X-Factor Dev, most people before the injury thought he was the best wide receiver in the class. Not even a super surprise that he went so high. He could be those things. I'm going to put him at number two, which is really starting to make me question number one. I did have a few honorable mentions, nothing crazy, but I had Trey McBride potentially on there as he could be star, could be superstar, doubt it, but 87 speed, 90 excel for a tight end. Tight end's a really tough position to draft, which is why I was going to put him on there maybe around 10, just because of position similar to the like the inverse of the running backs being low. Once again, running backs, really easy to get. Tight end, super hit or miss in a draft, very fast, very usable, young 
And then, a player I didn't want to put on because people would think I'm just doing it because I'm a Packers fan, but Christian Watson maybe could have been faster in the game, but of course, six foot four, 93 speed, 94 excel, maybe 23 in the game. And also, another thing on top of it is he's not a good blocker in the game, which I think you compare what he's probably going to be doing for Green Bay and how well he'll probably be doing it. He's going to do a lot of blocking, and I think that rating may jump, but then again, Alan Lazard is really bad blocking in the game. EA might just not care. Regardless, though, number one, hopefully no one's too mad, is Malik Willis. I mean, no one is absolutely surprised by his ratings. I still think his speed in Excel might be a lot higher than we would have expected from him. I think 89, 90 speed is kind of maybe what we thought, but he is blazing. I get he's 23, and there's a very realistic chance he could be uh, normal development trade in the game. But if he is star, 94 throw power with those speed ratings, I've said it a billion times now, he's literally Kyler Murray as a rookie here, which in-game Kyler Murray is a very annoying player to go against. Of course, his change of direction, his juke ability, all of that stuff is super high. His throw ability is decent. I've talked about it last video, break sack 86, that is tough to develop. Accuracy ratings are obviously good enough to get the job done while developing him and I think with that speed, the throw power and all that, while quarterback is somewhat easy to get in Madden uh, drafts, you have to, to get a guy like this, in a user league, you're drafting number one overall. That's the only way you're getting a guy like this. In a non-user league, you're still probably drafting minimum in the top 20 or so. So it just, it's a fair argument. And I think because it's a quarterback, it gets to be up there. You compare him to the rest of the class. There are a lot of other good guys, but you know, Kenny Pickett who was a first-round pick. is literally the worst of the big five, if you will. But Malik Willis is just insane the way he was rated. So got to put him on the list. 43 awareness is also very interesting because I wonder. I know for O-line, you get really dumb awareness upgrades. You get them all the time. I wonder how that's going to work. Does his awareness being 43 actually help him? Once again, you mentioned with some of the other players that the lower the overall, the more upgrades you're going to get technically. Does that help him or hurt him? I don't know, but obviously we're going to get a chance to see it because he is going to be a super sought-after player to use in the game. I mean, I always thought Jalen Hurts would be kind of be fun because he's hard to develop and he's a little bit worse in throw power and all that, but this man, he's got all the tools right in front of him. Regardless, though, let me know what you guys think. I'm really curious to see what your guys' list would be of, of these 10. Is there a player I completely missed? Is a player that shouldn't be here? Like, you can maybe argue against perhaps sauce you're like you know he's not that fast he's i think the dev plays a huge far uh part of course he's taller fart <laughs> uh but i think this is spot on i think almost every year we pretty much hit the nail on the head with the overpowered maybe the rankings of the players might not be perfect but the top 10 is always damn near perfect which is kind of an oxymoron regardless though hopefully you guys enjoy this one if you guys have any more ratings videos you'd like to see me do let me know in the comment section below. There's not a whole lot more I can think of doing other than, uh, you know, maybe top 10 players to trade for, you know, that are like kind of sleeper esh that aren't rookies. But typically, Madden's ratings are going to be basically the same as last year for non rookies, because obviously the rookies weren't in the game, which is why the rookies get so much highlight during this ratings time. Uh, and yeah, there will be tomorrow, most likely, a video talking about what potential franchise team we're going to be for our main franchise for Madden 23. And then speaking of franchise, possibly a Nighthawks video. I always like to do rebuilds on Sunday, but once again, I don't know what to do for a rebuild. We are almost dry as the Sahara out here with rebuild ideas. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!